Hi and welcome to this uh, this edition module 13 about error handling and I think that this is one of the the things that you probably are going to spend half the, the, the project about how do we actually do error handling on this project what's important what is it that once we have delivered the data and we are finding all these different error uh, exceptions that are going on how do we actually process it and yeah I have not seen any integrations where there would not where there was not occurring any errors that you need somehow to be able to to process and ensure that well this is uh, what's going on um, and be able to to handle because if you have not built in some kind of an error handling in this process you would have to figure out how to do it itself and and it will just be a more complicated matter if you're doing it in a support organization compared to being able to actually deliver it on front and actually figure out what you need to deliver. But obviously this is also something you need to figure out in the organization. What is it that we look at? What's important? What's going on? And, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you will spend a lot of time doing and figuring out how to implement the error handling. And as a basis, the error handling is not that difficult. There's just a lot of scenarios you need to, to handle. Um, the big thing that they have added is this thing about an ex error branch. And I would say this is just like if you're in normal Java or Groovy, you have a try catch, then the error branch is your catch where you can do some handling about what's going on uh, in this process without returning this directly to the user. Um, this can be triggered in, in case of an error in the flow and so whenever an error occurs inside a specific flow the error branch will, will occur and you can then go in and check what type of errors is it that we have, what information exists there and then figure out how do we actually report this. One thing I've, I've found is if you have triggered and come into an error flow, you cannot go back into the original flow. So let me try to explain this. So imagine we have a, a, a normal flow here that, that goes and, and creates. So, so this example we had was we wanted to create some, some orders in, in our system. And then once we have created the order, we wanted to check the status of this order. Was it created or not? Um, or when it was created, then send some, some data to the recipient. So when we call this, if in here, if we, we, got this, we got the information back that the order was already created, um, then we had to build an error flow that said, okay, we got an error response back that says the order was already created. And my thought was, well, it would be nice if I could just return to my mail flow, uh, maybe do a call and, and get this extra information, but return to the main flow and then go to and, and get the status and up like that. So the only thing way I found that this could actually be solved was that in from our main flow, we could actually go to this error flow when it or this flow when it caused an error and this was when the order was not created we would go into the error flow and then we would call our normal flow so instead of just having a long main flow we had to pipe it out uh, into an entry flow and a second flow and then in the second we could then do the the normal handling because it was then coming from this specific error flow where we had this uh, this error so um, yeah, I guess from a, a coding perspective, it's not ideal. It uh, did solve the, the, the case where, where we had this information and it was pretty easy. I guess the other approach would be, have been that we should query if the, the service has been there, uh, check the status of that one, if it was already there, just uh, continue. But that would then be another call we needed to, to put into and then, well, yeah. Maybe <laughs> in hindsight, probably a better idea to 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 try to figure out what what exceptions you uh, can occur. Check them in in front instead of just waiting all the way until you get the exception when you're creating the order. Um, 
and then move along to the next flow. But obviously that can also be other errors that you cannot really check. Um, it could be that when you're creating the order, the system says uh, busy, wait uh, another five minutes and then try again. Um, and then you need to build that into and then continue with the second flow. So it's probably a good idea to, to have multiple flows uh, in, in that order. Then one of the, the challenges of, of this is when you're calling uh, response and getting data, you wouldn't, uh, you're not able to actually see the payload that's coming into the, it, of coming back from the HTTP channel. Uh, so uh, there's uh, this, uh, oh, this small script that you can put in that will actually check if, if we're getting a camel caught exception and if that's the case and it's an AC operation it will extract the, the payload of this uh, message put it into a body uh, into the message body and set it in as an attachment also so we'll be able to actually see what we have in this exception so here I have a, a simple exception or simple flow I have just added an exception branch that is then triggered whenever something bad occurs in, in my main flow but you, obviously you can add exception branches to all the different areas in your landscape. So um, now we have the, the flow, it's calling some web service, we're getting uh, data here and let me just deploy this hopefully that will work um yeah so so the data we're getting back here is not really created and let me just try to execute we just want to go into trace mode so we set it up as trace mode we will then run it. And we can see we're getting a 200 error back, but we're also getting the error code and that's because it has been inserted. Let's just have a look at the, the messages that we're getting. So if we look at the, here we got our payload. We can see here the, the flow that this message fails in here. Um, and I guess maybe we we'll see it here. Here we're getting some, some data back. Here we're getting the, the response. And then we can see what, what type of message it is. But there's no data here. So it, all the error, <coughs> error information is in one of the attributes. And then we're going to this specific error handling branch where we can see still the, the 200 error that we have gotten. And we can see this uh, exception called uh, here and this is what you normally see in your locking but obviously that is really will not help us uh, do anything about it so if we look out here oh it's not giving us any error yeah yeah so we can also see we have attached this body here so it's pretty easy to see what's going on in this one so uh, let me just try to remove this and let me show you what the flow would then look like um, because obviously it's important what it will look like if we've not done any error handling. So what we'll get is we'll just get this information that we got a 400 error on the flow. And if we didn't have a look at our main flow, we can see it fails, which is okay. But we're just getting this status that it's error 400 and there's actually no MPL uh, information that we can use. Uh, to fit this uh, this information, so it's a uh, it's a bit challenging actually to find it unless you have added this uh, this small script into your code. Um, so the way you then go back is you just cancel this uh, this change. You since I saved it as a version, oh, I just need to. Revert. So 
so I had on my 13 here I had a version we just created we will revert to this one and then once we open it we got our normal flow back again so we can actually see what is going on here see the CO scripts and here we can see it's just the same script I pasted in and obviously um, yeah, you can add more to it uh, so it matches what you need in your landscape. Uh, then we we can talk a little about whether or not we actually want to propagate the arrow back, and it it really depends on where the error occur, what type of error it is, and we saw in the one of the the beginning we could actually also trigger different alerts or errors that is being propagated back to the, the recipient that says, hey, this was the reason why something was going on. Um, so we have uh, had some scenarios where we actually wanted to upload some data into uh, Salesforce, and we would then get some information back that three transaction was not committed successfully. And we could obviously consider, should we report this as an error because we are missing the data and users should be able to see it. Um, but we decided it would be a little too difficult, so we added uh, information that allowed the users to actually find these um, a lot easier. Um, and the, the challenge was if, if, for instance, the SAP system that were uploading this data got a 4, four error, or whatever it was, a 500 error, it would not really know what was going on and it would be really difficult for the users to actually process it. So that was the reason why we wanted to to move, to skip the error handle, or just say the, the, the flow was successful. We set up some parameters that actually allow us to, to search for this, this field, add all the different attachments in, um, so users can actually fast see what's going on. So a lot of uh, scenarios I've seen, users would actually figure out how do we actually log some of this external information because as you see in the log, it's not persisting all the different data that you have um, and it can really be difficult uh, doing troubleshooting it and uh, figure out what's what's going on across the landscape. So there's uh, cloud locking tools like Splunk, uh, Lockly, or Humio. And a whole host of other tools that actually allows you just to, to send uh, payloads and then you can actually monitor these payloads, view what's going on and do uh, uh, some kind of investigation in there. Um, and set up alerts that if, if some of these things are happen, then, then do uh, notify someone else. You probably want to create a process direct adapter here um, so it's able to send data the right way. One thing I'm actually a bit concerned about is if you just have the normal license where you're paying per connections, how this would actually occur if you're adding Lockly, for instance, that's on a different URL than your current system, how that would trigger uh, and how many connections that would add. Um, but that, that, that <laughs> is something I haven't figured out how that actually will uh, impact the systems but um, yeah that is what I hear a lot of people are using some external locking system where they can actually send this uh, extra information and then users can see what's going on there in the Figafi T we do have an option that will actually allow you to see some of these f messages that fail and actually able to set up uh, monitoring uh, capabilities on top of that. Um, so, it, yeah, it, I think this is uh, sometimes a little easier to find out what's going on using this. So let me just show you a short demo of some of the things that we can. So um, I have a scenario here that is called And this one is just sending a message. We can see it in the PI monitoring. Here it's sending a message. We can see it's adding these uh, extra information and send a receiver information with lock. And I think that's, mm, yeah, this is uh, this 
this slide. I've uh, created a blog post where it just describes a little about some of the extra error handling that you can actually do um, to make it easier for you to find correlations uh, across the landscape. So if you have something that's using the pro process uh, direct adapter, you would be able to, to... So you would have one message with multiple correlations ID. Um, the application ID may be identical across the landscape. Uh, but but these three you can actually set in the in the the process, um, and I guess I'll also show that. But okay. so um, let's see if I can find it. That's always this the good thing about these things you can never find it. Um, so um, I think it's here. I'm then setting the sender and receiver to this information. So we can actually see it here. I'm trying to redefine the correlation ID, but I cannot do it at this point in time. Um, but here you can set up this uh, these parameters. So in the Figafia T tool, um, And obviously, um, we have a way you can go into your uh, CPI system, check all the different flows that, that failed. So you can actually see what was going on in this one. So we can see the error that we got at 400 here. But obviously, we cannot see more than you can see in the monitor. Um, and you can set up rules that says if we're getting this, create a rule that says if the adapter contains this, um, then send it to some person, do some, create web hooks and stuff like that on top of it. Um, you also have the option to do the fine uh, where you want it actually to, to lock certain messages. And then we just want to create this one. So here we have created some of these uh, FSD locks. And just because that it is at, we have defined we want to search this, it will save all the attachments as uh, whatever file you have, and you can download and view them from here. We also have the option to set in webhooks. So in this case, we have actually created a, uh, yeah, a webhook that will send the data to Jira. So we actually get all the information to Jira and can do processing there. Uh, I, yeah, do try it out if, if that's something you find helpful. Vigaf.com forward slash ERT cloud. Um, so, uh, yes, error handling something you would be spending a lot of time on um, because you want to be, able, it should be as easy for the uh, organization to process these things. And a lot of times I have seen that you're getting these uh, strange error that could be a little challenging to understand and figure out what you actually need to do with. So um, yeah, um, spend some time on it, figure out how you can actually create alerts or handle these things, understand what's going on and allow users to see some more details on it. And if you can automate some of the error handling uh, using, as we talked about in the previous one with the data store, using the data store persistent message there, have something else that would pick it up and process it uh, later would also be an option that will make this uh, this possible so uh, yes thanks for watching